my autumn reading list which is not by any means finalized because I am an intuitive reader and I will read whatever I want whenever I want but these are books that I found in my pile that I thought I really want to read this in the next season or so and they all kind of give me somewhat autumn energy which is a rather ambiguous and loose term because what is autumn energy if not reading in general <laughs> I think the way that I'll show you the books is just by reading the blurb because I haven't read them. So I'm excited to read them. <laughs> so I'll just read you the blurb. But before anything, I have accumulated for you a short but important list of words on autumn. Because would it be a Dakota video if I haven't at least dropped a few little extracts of my favorite writing before we go into the actual reading? <laughs> my glasses are so scratched permanently that it probably is just making my vision worse give me the juicy autumnal fruit ripe and red from the orchard give me the splendid silent sun october baptize me with leaves swaddle me in corduroy and nurse me with split pea soup October, tuck tiny candy bars in my pockets and carve my smile into a thousand pumpkins. O oh, autumn, O oh, tea kettle, O oh, grace. I love that one so much. Finally, a poem from Ernest Dawson. Pale amber sunlight falls across the reddening October trees that hardly sway before a breeze, as soft as summer, summer's loss. Seems little, dear, on days like these. Let misty autumn be our part, the twilight of the year is sweet, where shadow and the darkness meet, our love, a twilight of the heart, eludes a little time's deceit. Are we not better and at home, in dreadful autumn, we who deem no harvest joy is worth a dream? A little while, and night shall come, a little while then let us dream. Beyond the pearl horizons lie winter and night awaiting these. We garnered this poor hour of ease until love turned from us and died beneath the drear November trees. Now we're going to jump into it, but quick disclaimer. I intend on spending this autumn being a bit of a hermit. We just had hot girl summer, now we have hermit girl autumn because I really want to get all the projects that I'm currently working on done. Or well, not done, but just rapidly advanced because I am a Virgo and I need to settle down and do my projects or I'll implode. <laughs> I've selected 12 books and I feel like 12 is a pretty realistic amount for me considering there's three months in autumn, roughly four weeks in a month, so that's 12 weeks to give myself. And if I've got 12 books, a book a week is very reasonable for me, but you know, who knows? Maybe I'll read all of them plus more. Maybe I'll read a few, maybe I'll read none. Maybe I'll read a bunch, but none from this list. This is just intuitive. <laughs> Without further ado, here are the books I want to read in autumn. First book we have is Evelyn Woe's Brideshead Revisited. And I have been recommended this a bunch, and I've also been recommended, I think there's a series or a film for it. And I am that girl, insufferable, who must read before I watch, so. Many of the best English novels are portraits of families. In Brideshead Revisited, Evelyn Woe narrates the fortunes of the accomplished but eccentric family of Lord Marchmain in a social panorama that ranges from Oxford to Venice. His dissection of the moral infirmities of society is as sharp and candid as it was in Decline and Fall or Vile Bodies. But in Brideshead Revisited, the longest and most ambitious of these novels, he also reveals a deep concern and sympathy for the dilemma of the individual. This edition includes an explanatory preface added by the author in 1959. Ah, 
This was secondhand. I feel like most of these are secondhand because I'm a secondhand book girly. Living in England, I've found I've been recommended so many quintessential English reads as what they study in school and whatnot. And this is one and I'm excited to read it. Next up, we have Keats. Selected poems and letters and tell me that isn't just autumn embodied and completely relevant and I love Keats, I adore Keats and I'm really excited to read more of Keats's poetry and this is a chronological selection of his poems and letters. Each edition has clear accessible notes on pages opposite the poems, an introduction to the poet's work and so I think it's got, yeah it does, it's got broken down um, tips and tricks inside of it to understand Keats's work so that was a really cool secondhand bookstore find, and I will be consuming this. I found this in a secondhand bookstore. This is Cracks by Sheila Cola. And I watched this film way too young. You know those films that you watch way too young that are quite disturbing, and at the same time as disturbing you, they entice you completely, they recode your DNA and change your taste in everything for the rest of your life. I watched this movie too young and now I can only watch disturbing films. I read The Lita too young and now I can only read books that challenge my morality and make me consider things from a grand perspective while also chilling me to my bone. Anyway, I found this and I was reminded of my experience and so now I'm going to read the book and then rewatch the film and see if it feels the same as it did when I was like 11. <laughs> a beautiful schoolgirl mysteriously disappears into the South African veld. Forty years later, 13 members of the Missing Girls swimming team gather at their old boarding school for a reunion and look back to the long, dry weeks leading to Fiamma's disappearance. As teenage memories and emotions resurface, the women relive the horror of a long-buried secret. I think I'll read this one maybe even today or tomorrow actually because I'm very, I'm very eager to read this. <laughs> As I began saying earlier, I don't know how many of these books I will actually get through based on the projects that I like to give myself, especially in autumn perfect gloomy weather is so inspiring to me <laughs> but these projects, a lot of these projects are going to be new creative projects and things that I haven't previously done and so this is the perfect way to introduce you to this video sponsor Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to explore their creativity or learn new skills. I've been using Skillshare for a while now and I can confidently say that if there's a skill you're thinking of learning or refining, Skillshare has a class for it. I've been exploring new classes to supplement my abundant autumnal projects like pottery and chess, but joining this class here from Anne Vitero made me fall head over heels in love with the art of messy creativity as an act of self-care. I was reminded that art is not art because it is perfect, but because of the practice in itself. Now luckily for you, the first 1000 people to follow the link in the description box and join Skillshare will get a free one month trial. It is very much worth it. Next up we have <laughs> Mesopotamia, the invention of the city from Gwendolyn Leake. I found this secondhand, once again, shock horror. Is there anything that I've bought new here? Yes. Three books are brand new in this stack. Anyway, so I saw this and got an instant flashback to very young Dakota's hyperfixation on ancient civilizations. This is one of the many uh, unique hyperfixations I had as a child with ADHD. It's one of the more interesting ones though and I'm really excited to delve back into this and so I will read you the blurb. Over 7,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, urban living began. Mesopotamia, situated roughly where Iraq is today, was one of the greatest ancient civilizations. It was here that the very first cities were created and where the familiar sites of modern urban life, public buildings and gardens, places of worship, even streets and pavements were originally invented. This remarkable book is the first to reveal everyday life as it was as it was the ten long lost Mesopotamian cities beginning with Eridu, Mesopotamian Eden and ending with Babylon, the first true metropolis. You get the picture that I'm really excited to dive into this. I'm so excited to dive into this. I have a tattoo actually. I'll show you. I was so obsessed with ancient civilizations for such a good chunk of my life. I don't even know if was is the correct tense word but anyway, this sword here it's a flaming sword held by a skeletal hand. This is for Asar Ludu from ancient Sumerian mythology and Akkadian mythology. He served as an exorcist in ancient Sumerian rituals and I thought that was really cool and I was really obsessed with that for a while and so 
that's one fun fact. <laughs> now, the next book we have is The Birth of Venus by Sarah Dunant. Dunant? I always struggle with the last names. I picked this up purely because of the blurb, so listen to this. Alessandra Cacci is not quite 15 when her father, a prosperous cloth merchant, brings a young painter back from Northern Europe to decorate the family chapel in the Florentine Palazzo. A child of the Renaissance, with a precocious mind and a talent for drawing, Alessandra is intoxicated by his talent. As Medici Florence is threatened by the hellfire of the monk Savonarola, the painter and his dazzling art exert an ever more powerful and erotic pull. This sounds so interesting. So interesting. So interesting. And I'm really excited to read it. Ooh, it sounds really good. Next we have The Promise by Damon Gelgut. And this was recommended to me by none other than my bestie Jack, who I'm sure you know if you watch my other videos. We have very, 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 very astronomically different taste in literature. And he is quite adamant that I'm going to love this and I want to give him and this book the time of day. And I really want to love it, but part of me is like, I don't really mind if I hate it because I am always looking for an opportunity to tell somebody I told you so. <laughs> On a farm outside Pretoria, the Swartz are gathering for Ma's funeral. The younger generation, Anton and Amor, detest everything in the family stand for, not least their treatment of the black woman who has worked for them her whole life. Salome was to be given her own house, her own land, yet somehow that vow is carefully ignored. As each decade passes and the family assemble again, one question hovers over them. Can you ever escape the repercussions of a broken promise? Okay, this does actually sound really good. I'm excited for this. Next I have Wendy Cope, if I don't know, this is a collection of her poetry. Um, if you don't know who Wendy Cope is, she has a poem that makes me tear up every time and it is called The Orange. I'll put it here for you but I'm not going to read it out loud at risk of crying. <laughs> it is such an incredible poem because it is so wholesome and sweet but you can peel back so many layers to it and it just reminds me of the simplicity of human nature and the human condition and it's just a really magic poem to me so uh, this doesn't have a blurb but it's just a collection of poetry and I'm excited to read that. The next book is Everything I Know About Love from Dolly Alderton. I found this at the thrift store for like a pound, so couldn't help myself. I've seen this everywhere. I actually don't know any reviews on it because I haven't really come across them. Uh, I probably have, but I just scroll past. But the reviews on this look good and I've seen it everywhere, so that's promising. Okay, it's one of those books that is so good that it doesn't have a blurb. It's just got about 20 reviews. <laughs> it's an autobiography based on her life experiences, um, but apparently she's really funny and insightful. I'll read you a couple of reviews. Steeped in furiously funny accounts of one night stands, ill-advised late night taxi journeys up to the N1, grubby flat shares and the beauty of female friendships as Alderton joyfully booze cruises her way through her 20s. That's relatable. <laughs> I loved it so much I wanted to go on forever. Dolly Alderton is so gifted at making people care, a rare talent. I want to care. And so I'm, I'm excited to read this. Not as good. Next up we have The Deloriad by Missouri Williams. And I got this, I picked this up because I saw it was recommended on the little list of read this if you like literature that's gonna mess you up. And you know, I do, bestie, you know I'm there. <laughs> but um, I started reading it. I could even tell you what page I got up to because I've dog ate it. Page 47. But it's one of those books that requires a lot to read it because it's giving you a whole entire new way of living and a whole new law and it's very surreal, almost quite fantasy style from what I've read thus far. I may be very wrong, but um, I didn't have the time and space for it when I first started, so now I'm going to, in Hermit Girl Autumn, give this another chance. In the wake of a mysterious environmental cataclysm that has wiped out the rest of humankind, hang on, can we just appreciate the word cataclysm? That is so phonetically pleasing. Cataclysm. Add that to my favourite word list. A family descended from their incest, <laughs> just straight into it. A family descended from their incest cling to existence on the edges of a deserted city. The matriarch, ruling with fear and force, dreams of starting humanity over again. Through her children, 
sorry, though her children are not so certain. Together the family scavenge supplies and attempts to cultivate the poisoned earth. When the matriarch dreams of another group of survivors, she sends out her daughter, Dolores, as a marriage offering. But her reappearance triggers a breakdown of the matriarch's fragile order, and the control she wields over the sprawling family begins to weaken. Gothic and strange, moving and disquieting, Dolores stares down humanity's unbreakable commitment to life for better or worse. And apparently this is a take on a Greek tragedy, so I am very excited to actually read this and get to the bottom of it, and I'm excited to be disturbed by it. I really am. Next, we have The Girls of Murder City by Douglas Perry, and this is non-fiction once again, and I picked this up because, you know, it looked interesting. Once again, secondhand. Chicago, 1924. There was nothing surprising about men turning up dead in the second city. But a pair of murders that spring had something special. And this is basically based on the uh, reviews which say, For true crime buffs, history fans, or anyone interested in the roaring 1920s, this one's a sure fire hit. I'm excited about this. This is based on true stories of a series of murders in the 20s by women. And that's fascinating to me. So I will be reading this. It's also got pictures. And if a book has like pictures in the middle, I'm more inclined to read it <laughs> because I am a child. Next we have Georges Bataille Eroticism and if you know who Bataille is, his work is very controversial, very not safe to pick up. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that any better. This blurb sucked me in. And here's why. A philosopher, essayist, novelist, pornographer, and fervent Catholic who came to regard the brothels of Paris as his true churches, Georges Bataille ranks among the boldest and most disturbing of the 20th century thinkers. In this influential study, he links the underlying sexual basis of religion to death, offering a dazzling array of insights into incest, prostitution, marriage, murder, sadism, sacrifice, and violence, as well as including comments on Freud, Dessart, and Saint Teresa. Everywhere eroticism argues sex is surrounded by taboos, which we must continuously transgress, transgress in order to overcome the sense of isolation that faces us all. This sounds exactly like my kind of book. <laughs> no expansion on that whatsoever. Just vibes. My final read for autumn is The Love Life of the Ancient Greeks from Sophia A. Suli. This I want to read for obvious reasons. Because I love ancient Greece and I love love. <laughs> There's no blurb on this because I believe that it kind of is very much self-implied on the cover on what it is. Also, look at this cover. Isn't that great? The blurb has this, um, a few words on Eros, he and she in older times, marriage, most ancient, love for sale, special friendships between men, and erotic friendships between women. And I am nothing if not a sucker for homoerotic relationships that were recounted in ancient history. <laughs> These are the books. These are my 12 reads of autumn. Ideally, but like, you know, you know me, I don't commit to anything. <laughs> I have commitment issues. Anyway, tell me what you're reading this fall, autumn, fall. I can't believe I just said fall first. That's so un-Australian of me. <laughs> Let's see how much I get done in my hermit girl autumn. I love spending time with you, as per, and I will see you next time. And I love you a lot, and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.